Here, the following raw data represent the monthly account balances to the nearest dollar for a sample of 50 brand new charge card users. Let's construct a grouped frequency and relative frequency distribution. Now here, they are giving us some guidelines. We're going to use seven classes with a uniform width of $20, where the lower limit of the first class is $40. And we want to then construct a histogram and a frequency polygon. So if I look at the data, the largest number in the data is 175 and the smallest looks to be 46. Actually, I see 42. So they are having us begin a little bit smaller than the lower number 42. They want us to begin our first class at $40. They also want us to use seven classes. So let's go ahead and begin our first class with the $40. And they want us to have a uniform width of $20. So I'm going to begin with the first class with $40. And since they give us a uniform width of $20, the width is actually going down. So I want to add 20 vertically to the first number. So 40 plus 20 is 60. 60 plus 20 is 80. 80 plus 20 is 100. And then we have 120, 140, 160. Next would be 180, but 180 would be too large because my highest number is 175. This does give me seven classes, so now I'm going to fill in my upper numbers. So if my next class starts at 60, then I'm going to have to go 40 to 59, 60 to 79, 80 to 99, 100 to 119, 120 to 139, 140 to 159, and 160 to 169 or 179. So make sure you go up correctly. That would actually go up to 179. You can see that within each class going horizontally, it's adding 19 consistently. Okay, so now we want to do a grouped frequency distribution first. So these are my classes and then I'm going to list my frequencies. So tally up how many are going to be in each class and then total that up and put that in each in that column. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've got everything um, tallied up. So now I'm going to list my frequencies. So for the first class, I just have three. For the second class, I have 5, 10, 11, and then I have 10, and then I have 12, and then I have 8, 3, and 3. Now the relative frequency distribution of this is going to total up how many we have. So you can add up all these frequencies. You could also count your rows and columns to get the total. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 5 times 10 is 50 numbers. You could also add the frequencies and you should get 50 as well. So we want to divide each of these by 50 to get the relative frequency um, and convert that to a percentage. So 3 divided by 50 is 0.06. So this is going to be 6%. 11 divided by 50 is 0.22 or 22%. 10 divided by 50 is equal to 0.2, so that would be 20%. 12 divided by 50 is equal to 0.24, 24%. 8 divided by 50 is 0.16, or 16%. And 3 divided by 50 is 0.06, or 6%. This should total up to 100%. So we have the regular frequency distribution, just list the totals in each class, and then the relative frequency converts each of those to a percent, comparing it to the total. 
Now let's construct a histogram. Now the histogram comes from the frequency distribution. So we're going to set up our axes and the y-axis is going to be the frequencies. And so the frequencies range from 3 all the way up to the highest of 12. So you can go up by 1s or you can go up by 2s there. So pick an appropriate scale. The x-axis is going to be the bars of your classes, 40 to 59, 60 to 79. And there's a lot of ways to do this. Sometimes you'll see the bars just labeled like 40 to 59. Other times you'll see the um, edges of the bars are boundaries of the class, or they might just put the midpoint in the middle of the bar. So I'm going to go ahead and just label the edges of the bars, or label the uh, bars with the classes, 40 to 59. So the histogram graph has to hug the axis. So the first class is 40 to 59, and it's going to have a frequency of 3. So you want to go up to 3, come over to your mark on the line, and make your first bar. Keep your bars equally spaced. So I'm going to have another mark here. This is going to be 60 to 79. And this class has a height of 11. So pick up where that other bar left off and go all the way up to 11 and then come back down to the axis. And you can shade the bars in or not. My next bar is the 80 to 99. And it had a frequency of 10. So just come over like that. So all the bars are connected to each other without any gaps, unless you have a gap in a class with zero for the frequency, then you would see a gap with the bars. My next bar is 100 to 119, and it has a frequency up to 12. And then I have a bar that is 120 to 139. It has a frequency of 8. And the final two bars have a frequency of 3, so they're going to have the same height. So you can kind of do that together. So this is the histogram. The histogram comes from your frequency distribution. You could do a histogram that would be a relative frequency histogram and the only change is that your y-axis would have the percentages instead of the frequencies. All right, so for a frequency polygon, we're going to start the graph. And again, I want to pick the y-axis to be my frequencies. So I'm going to just use the same scale again, going up by twos. And now we want to calculate the midpoints of each class. So to calculate a midpoint, you take the lower number plus the upper number and you divide it by 2. So for the first class, I have 40 plus 59 equals 99 divided by 2 is 49.5. So I have a midpoint of 49.5 for my first class. The next class would be 60 plus 79 divided by 2. 60 plus 79 is equal to 139 divided by 2, and you get 69.5 for that midpoint. Now, there is obviously a pattern here, so you can stop adding and dividing by 2 if you want to. And notice that if your width is going up by 20 each time on the ends, then your middle should also go up by 20. And that's just an easy way to figure out the rest of the midpoints once you get it started. So if I add 20 to 69.5, I get 89.5. If I add 20 to that, um, you get 109.5. Add 20 to that, you get 129.5. Add 20 to that, and you get 149.5. And so the last class midpoint is going to be 169.5. OK, so then on my x-axis, I'm going to plot these midpoints. 
and I want my data to go from 49.5 was the first midpoint up to 169.5. So pick an appropriate scale from you know 0 to 170 so maybe we can go up by 20s and we do have a gap with the first um, you know from 0 to 49.5 but we'll go ahead and just go up by 20s. Okay, so now go to the midpoint of each class and you go and plot a point at its height. So my first midpoint was 49.5, which would be right around 50. and want to go up to a height of 3 and plot a point. Next midpoint was 69.5 with a height of 11. And you'll connect these dots as you go. Next midpoint was 89.5 and it has a height of 10. And then I have 109.5 with a height of 12. You see these graphs a lot with um, stock market data showing you the, the trend of the data over time. And then we have 129.5 with a height of 8. One forty nine point five with a height of three, and last one also has a height of three, and its midpoint is one sixty nine point five, so it'll be a horizontal segment there. So right now we've actually sketched all the data, but it's not a polygon yet. A polygon is a closed in figure. So what you do to close it in is you take that first point that you plotted and you want to go back to where the previous midpoint would be. So kind of keep this space equally apart and you just hit zero and you're just saying I didn't have a point there but I had um, that would just close it in on the the first piece and then you take the same thing at the last point and you just go down to where the next midpoint would have been and hit the line um, and that creates the polygon.